again everybody this is Derek and I am coming back at you with another wargaming and miniature video in today's video we're going to be taking a look at the Rubicon models uh, in this case the 25 millimeter round bases uh, they have a couple of different packs they have the 25 millimeter and the 60 millimeter packs but in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the 25 millimeter round bases. Uh, there's a lot of interesting things about these bases that I want to uh, either debunk or emphasize. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these bases out. We're going to take a close look at them. And then I'm going to experiment uh, by gluing a, uh, a Warlord Games model onto one of these bases uh, and using plastic cement. Uh, there was uh, a couple of comments when I did some what's in the boxes from the Rubicon models. Uh, they were telling me that Rubicon uses a type of plastic that uh, plastic cement doesn't work on. Well, I don't believe them. And so this is gonna be a test. Uh, we're also gonna compare them to the Warlord Games bases and see how they, how they compare. All right, uh, now if you've ever been to any of these what's in the box slash bags uh, before, what I do is I will take them out of the packaging, I will look at them, I will scrutinize them, analyze them, and then what we'll do is we'll zoom in on them and take a, take a look to see exactly what I'm seeing. All right, now this package is sealed with a couple of staples, so, uh, Give me a second, we'll open this up. Okay, so let's just put this placard off to the side. Uh, it's not a Ziploc bag, but that's no problem. I've got a million Ziploc bags I can put this into uh, a Ziploc bag. Now they say there's 25 of them in there. Um, if you're familiar with the Warlord Games uh, bases, I think on a sprue there's like 30. There might be 25, but I think there's 30 on a sprue. Um, it might be 25. Okay, so let's let's take one of these and take a close-up look at it. Okay, now it's double-sided, right? You got these dimples on both sides. These are big holes, uh, and this these are just little dimples that go down into it. The uh, They say that you can take a pin vise and drill out one of these holes. It'll correspond to a hole on this side and then you could pin uh, your unit in, or your figure in place without it tipping over or anything like that. That's that's a pretty cool idea, um, but on a figure that's going on a 25 millimeter base, I don't think I'm going to need to pin them uh, unless it was some crazy fantasy figure that was just gigantic. Okay, there is a mold line around the edge, but I don't see any burrs. Yeah. I could just take an X-Acto knife and scrape that off, or I could just leave it. Um, okay, so these holes here are pretty sizable. Um, two millimeter, maybe? Where these little holes here, they say are 0.8 um, millimeters. That's fine. Um, it does look like this side has a much deeper uh it's much deeper 
so that if you were putting basing material in there, it's going to stay within the edges. Um, this side also is sunken, but it's sunken very little, maybe one millimeter, maybe less than one millimeter. Uh, a big advantage, uh, so basically the way I would glue it where I am, going to glue this model down, is I'm going to have this small lip on the, on the bottom and the big lip on the top where my basing material will stay inside. Um, an advantage of that would be if I'm putting a model in there that has its own base, like a lot of their um, Napoleonic or ancient figures have their own base that they stand on, uh, and then you would glue it onto usually a big base. But if I'm playing like SPQR or something like that, uh, or if I have another company, like Plastic Soldier Company, like if I have a Plastic Soldier Company, you can see that this model has, uh, I don't know if you can see that focus, but it's got its own base and it sticks up. But if it was in there, it would be down inside this lip so that your basing material would be more flush, more level, um, less putty work if you if you do that. Okay. Um, it does say like Rubicon models, 2017, 25 millimeter. And then on this side, it doesn't say anything. Okay, give me a second. I'm gonna clean this German Grenadier up okay now there is a they talk about it on the packaging that the dimples there uh, do a couple of different things not only do they line up your pin vise uh, or pins pinholes for your figures but they also help secure your basing materials on the bottom And I'm also only using Tamaya Thin. I'm not using the super thick basing material, uh, glue. Okay, so we're going to set that off to the side, and I'm going to let that dry for a minute. And we're going to see if that uh, does, in fact, stay attached. Okay, so while we're waiting for that, I want to compare the base to, uh, so like, some people were telling me that this is the new Warlord Ga Games bases. I think they're lying. Uh, this looks a lot like the old base, and if, if, if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. Uh, you don't have to comment in the comments. But um, I've been gaming a long time, and I know that this base with no lip is older than, uh, and no wording on the bottom is a lot older than the new bases that say Warlord Games on the bottom and have a lip. These are the new bases, I, and you can't convince me otherwise. Okay. Uh, Big advantage to having these uh, like this, I can just uh, store them in my box or whatever like this. I'm not going to lose anything or anything like that. But the downside is I have to take a few extra minutes to uh, snip them off of their sprue. And then 
uh, wherever I snip, there's probably a little bit of a burr. Um, and you can see that on this one here. There's a burr right there, there's a burr right there, and there's a burr right there. And then I would have to go in with my X-Acto knife and clean these burrs off, which I don't mind doing that, but I'm just saying it's an extra step. Where these don't have any burrs, they are completely burr-less. There is a mold line, but that mold line is no big deal. Okay, uh, one advantage, according to Rubicon, but you'll have to decide if you think this is an advantage or not. You can see how thin this base is. It lays flush on the ground. The lip goes up very small, maybe 0.5 millimeters. It's like super thin. And, uh, but these bases are probably three or four millimeters thick. Uh, and it will elevate your model up a couple of millimeters higher than these guys, right? Uh, you can see the thickness uh, is like more than double. Uh, so you might consider that to be a disadvantage, but in my opinion, it makes for picking up the model a lot easier than uh, if I had a base like that. Um, I can't pick it up by the base. I have to pick it up by the figure. And if you know anything about paint jobs and stuff, eventually that will wear off. But with a thicker base like this, I could pick, pick my models up by the base. So I consider that an advantage. Okay, size-wise. Uh, we talked about depth, but now let's look at, is it in fact the same? Yeah, it is. They're exactly the same. So the measurements are the 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 diameter is exactly the same. Okay, so I'll be back in like zero seconds and we're gonna test the strength. Not We're not gonna test the strength, but we're gonna see if it stays glued on there. Okay guys, we are back. It seems like the guys in the comments were correct. This does not want to glue to this using your traditional plastic cement. You'll have to use a different type of cement. So what we're going to do is we're going to try uh, Gorilla Glue, Super Glue, and uh, give me a second while I glue this down and then we'll see if that makes any difference. Okay, it's glued down. Uh, what I'm going to do now is give it about a minute and then I'm going to come back and see uh, because this glue does say 10 to 45 seconds. So I'm going to give it a full minute. All right, guys, I'm back. I went ahead and grabbed a Ziploc, put these guys in a Ziploc. Uh, because I'm going to be recording tonight another video on a variety of different bases. It's going to be an extremely long video, but I'm going to be talking about like what the best basing materials are for your projects. So that's going to be a like a know-it-all kind of video. Like uh, not a tutorial, but mainly like a know-it-all. Okay, so I glued this guy down. I've already tested it. It's pretty secure. Um, I'm sure that if I just yanked on it, I could break it off, but right now it's doing really good. Plus, once I put the, uh, what I use is white glue, Elmer's glue, to fill in the, um, grass and the dirt and stuff like that. Uh, actually, I probably wouldn't even do that. I'd probably use the, uh, 
uh, basing putty. Once I put the basing putty in there, uh, that's going to give the figure additional strength uh, also. And then I will, when I go to put the Elmer's glue to put the actual flock or whatever else on there, that would give it a third layer of strength. So this is actually doing pretty good um, on that. All right. So I learned something. The plastic cement doesn't work on the Rubicon models. So uh, I appreciate you out there in the comments that gave me that heads up. Uh, I wanted to test it for myself, and you are correct. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out. And Nope, wait. That's not true. That's not true. I wanted to show you these bases up close so you could see for yourself what they look like. Let me adjust the focus and we'll be right back. All right, let me show you what I'm considering the top of the base. You can see where it says 25 millimeter 2017 Rubicon models and you can see the dimples. Um, and you can see the lip, how deep that is. That's a pretty good sized depth. Uh, when looking at the Warlord Games depth, you can see that there's almost no depth. All right, and it's super thin. All right, so that's the top of the base. Let's, and you can see that there is that mold line that goes around the edge. Um, I don't know if that really deters from the model or not, but I would probably remove it just for uh, just to make it look smooth when I go to paint it. Okay, let's take a look at the other side. Okay, now this is about the same depth uh and the and very shallow dimples which might be a better top um if you wanted it to be a little closer to the warlord games tops uh having a a, a ridge like that on the bottom to me uh will well either side can be the top or bottom right but if you're using figures like the one I'm using right here, uh, I probably didn't need to put it on the deep side because it doesn't come with its own base. I probably could have put it on the shallow side, uh, like this side. Uh, it probably would have, uh, plus the, um, yeah, because the, 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 what am I trying to say? The lip that goes around the base will actually grip the table. So when you put like uh, some of these flat bases that have absolutely nothing on the bottom will actually slide around on your table material uh, where I could see where this would grip better on an actual table and it won't slide around. Uh, yeah, I like these bases a lot. Actually, I like them a lot. But the only downside I can think of that, and that's your call, is how thick they are. Some people like thin bases, others like I'm holding this base in my fingers. It's uh, it's a good grip. Okay, let's show you the um, the one I put the miniature on. Right, I put it down inside the uh, down inside the deep side uh, when I probably should have put it on the shallow side. I did that so that there would be it would be more flush with the table. But that's unnecessary. I think this would have been a good... And you can do sci-fi, whatever. Alright guys, that is the Rubicon 
25 millimeter round bases. It comes as a pack of 25. Um, I planned to use these with my uh, metal miniatures. The um, offensive miniatures, metal miniatures, and those miniatures I will put down inside the deep side because they have their own figure base as well. Because uh, something that has a base like that on it, uh, see this is a Warlord base, but it sticks up way too high. You can see the figure base. All right, guys. Well, thanks for coming out and checking out this video. And be sure to check out my basing materials uh, know-it-all video that I'm going to be releasing um, very soon. All right. I'll catch you in the next one.